Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G and it's Thursday, September 1st. Tesla's electric vehicle sales and exports in China have come back to pre-shutdown levels with 77,000 units delivered in the month of August. The automaker has had a tough year with China due to COVID restrictions leading to factory shutdowns, lower supply, climate issues leading to power constraints, and then finally a voluntary shutdown to upgrade the factory's output. Now, the China Passenger Car Association said that Tesla sold about 77,000 made-in-China vehicles last month, confirming that the plant is back on track. Of course, the upgrades to the plant that we will see hopefully in the near future will increase this export even more. Tesla has decided to use China's plant as their main export hub. Tesla has recently visited Nuevo Mon's graphite mine and processing factory in Quebec, as the automaker is increasingly looking to establish a factory in Canada. Nuevo Mon Graphite is a Quebec-based company developing a graphite mine and processing facilities to supply automakers and battery manufacturers with the critical material for creating the anode part of the cell. Electric learned from sources familiar with the matter that Tesla recently paid a visit to the mine and phase one of its processing plant. It comes just as we learned of a visit from Tesla in Canada to meet Vail Nichols operations in the country, and also local media has reported that Tesla took the opportunity to scout factory sites in Quebec and Ontario at the same time. And wouldn't you know it, Tesla has now disclosed that it is lobbying the Canadian government for an accelerated permitting process to build a factory in the country. In Canada, companies have to disclose all their lobbying efforts with the government. And now, the Electric Autonomy Canada reports on Tesla's statement that reads, quote, Seek government support to facilitate the engagement with provinces regarding permitting timelines to increase the competitiveness of Canada and its ability to attract capital through approval timeframes that are competitive with other manufacturing locations while working with government to identify incentives to further increase the attractiveness of Canada. Whew. Of course, this isn't Tesla's first move in the country. Last month, they met with Francois-Philippe Champagne, Canada's federal minister in charge of innovation, science, and industry. Seems clear that Canada will be getting a factory quite soon. General Motors has officially begun Ultium electric vehicle battery production in the U.S. as part of its $2.3 billion joint venture with LG Energy Solutions. The joint venture's 2.8 billion square foot facility in Ohio is now assembling battery packs for the GMC Hummer EV, but they remain hush on what other electric vehicles in the GM family will also receive them. GM does have the upcoming Blazer EV, Silverado EV, and the Cadillac Lyric that are all in the pipeline. With the long-term supply of the lithium lineup, General Motors and LG are poised to bring some serious battery production to U.S. soil, which will prove fruitful to consumers buying General Motors EVs that qualify for the federal tax credit. And qualify they will with those American-made batteries. Mercedes-Benz has finally started to share the price of their EQS SUV, which has been rolling off the assembly lines. Better late than never. The starting price for the EQS 450 Plus trim is $104,400. It scales up to the EQS 584 Matic trim, which is listed for $132,200. If you'd like to take a look at the full breakdown, we've got that on our site with pricing and trim, electrek.co. Two months after the closing of the second quarter of 2022, Polestar has come out with more detailed financials for the first half of the year, reporting $1.04 billion in revenue. Quite impressive. Compared to the $534.8 million in the first half of 2021, this brand is now touting a year-over-year -year increase of 95%. Quite encouraging. With two SUVs, a sports sedan, and a recently announced Roadster in production pipeline for the next four years, Polestar has a lot to look forward to. Tire maker Goodyear has revealed plans to further support the EV market. Goodyear introduced its first tire specifically designed for electric cars back in 2018, including models for Tesla. But they are now adding to the lineup with the Goodyear Electric Drive All Season and two new sizes for the Electric Drive GT. The new tire is available in the size 215-5017 and 215-5517. 
comes loaded with a 60,000 mile tread life limited warranty. Not entirely sure what they mean by that, but I'm sure there's a lot of paperwork to cover it. In today's community comment section found on YouTube, Frank Coffey says, that sure is a change in the message from Toyota. Looks like they are starting to get the message. Yes, Frank, I would hope so. I'm not entirely educated on the nuances of global vehicle manufacturing, but it's my guess that Toyota still has time to turn things around. I remember in the electric bike industry, the big established bike companies swore that they would never make an electric bike. Those were for cheaters. They detested the idea, and on some occasions actually endorsed bans in certain municipalities. But then, wouldn't you know it, electric bike sales became the only growing segment of the market, and even the big companies had to make a model. So, with cobbled together electric bikes using someone else's technology, these big lazy bike companies came in late, smoking their cigarettes and spitting on the floor, and acted like it was their idea all along. That's how it goes, I suppose. They sneer at innovation when it's staring them in the face, treating it like a disease. And then when they're finally brought to the light, they say, Oh, we always embraced new change in technology. Revolution is in our company's DNA. Well, I think it's a bunch of malarkey. And you can tell I've got an axe to grind. Sorry for the rant, Frank. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.